Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Shenandoah 2045 day. That's the day every month I jump on the Zooms with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner. We get an update on the comprehensive planning process for Shenandoah County. Tyler, we're going to do a little detour in our conversation this month because Woodstock is also knee deep in the middle of their comprehensive planning process. So Jill Jefferson is joining us. She is director of planning for the town of Woodstock. Also on the screen with us is Michael Stapor. He is a consultant with Summit Design and Engineer Services. Before we jump in the weeds though, Tyler, about Woodstock's planning, Public hearing right around the corner. We're recording this a couple of weeks in advance, but as people are listening today, it's this week. That's right. Just Thursday at 7 p.m. in Woodstock, you can come and hear our presentation for our public hearing for the comprehensive plan. So if you've been listening all these years of the five years of work we've been doing this, we'd love to have you there and support us and then also show up when Woodstock's done with their plan and support them as well, because we're all in this together. What do you expect to have happen at that public hearing? You make a presentation, people are given some time to speak on it, the public can give input. There's not a vote that night on this yet, though, right? Anything that might happen that night might be a recommendation from the Planning Commission to the board. Ultimately, the board would have that final vote, and that'll happen at a later date to be determined after that meeting. But yes, there'll be a presentation, complete overview for anyone who isn't aware of the plan to have been heavily involved in it, and then some time for the public to speak and provide input on it. And it's a fairly logical process. I'm going to jump over to Jill Jefferson for a minute. Jill, it's got to be easy when you guys are doing an update to a comprehensive plan to know that there is a timeline. It's not like you got to figure everything out as you're going along. One of the things I've learned from Tyler is that there are certain parameters and timelines and people that have to approve things at certain stages. That's got to make it at least a little less overwhelming. It does. It tends to be an incremental evolution that our appointed body, the planning commission, which ultimately, as Tyler said, makes the recommendation to our elected officials. So that would be the town council in Woodstock. And we look forward to having these continual conversations. And then there's outreach with the public. Tyler and I have talked in the past, and you were actually on a show not too terribly long ago talking about collaboration, because while Shenandoah County has this overall comprehensive plan, each of the individual towns, Woodstock, Strasburg, Newmarket, Mount Jackson, all of them have to have their own comprehensive plan as well, but they all have to work together. The county can't say, hey, this is what our plan looks like, and then Woodstock comes along and says, actually, we're going in this whole opposite other direction. You guys still have to work together to make sure everything fits together. We do. I mean, that's the beauty of the collaboration process, but the state code ensures that every locality plans for what's in their own borders within their own jurisdiction. And then some towns take a look outside into the county, and we certainly look to interface with our surrounding county so that we're not just donut holes surrounded by a donut, and they're not just the donut around us that we interface. Because most people who are visiting or living in these areas don't know exactly where the boundary is. And having things look the same, the infrastructure the same, it gives a continuity to the look and feel and helps with development and infrastructure that's going around there. And you guys are, you mentioned before we started recording, about halfway through this process. You're at the stage now where you're looking at trends and seeing what input you've gotten back from the public, things along those lines. That, to me, is the fun part, but maybe not if you're hearing from angry people. (laughs) We've been really lucky in terms of all the voices that we hear have been saying similar topics, similar themes. So that makes us feel like we have a good finger on the pulse for what are key issues that everybody's interested in. And while people have been passionate, we haven't had ire or anger, but we have had strong suggestions and recommendations. I'm going to let Michael Staper from Summit, who's our consultants, and I work closely with Michael. We probably talk several times each week, keeping up with everything. So Michael, do you want to give an overview of what you've been seeing with the public outreach? What are the pulse themes that have risen to the surface? 
Yeah. In a lot of ways, this is the fun part where after we listen to the public and we hear that people want new restaurants and new retail opportunities, and they might be struggling with affordable housing and those types of challenges, or they don't want to see traffic. We take in all of that feedback that we've been hearing. And then from that, we're currently drafting the vision statement and all of the goals and objectives for the plan. So we take everything that's just in this knot right now, and we figure out what is the best way to move forward for Woodstock into the future. Do you find that it is beneficial to you since Tyler has already done, and I say Tyler, I know there's a whole team and there's the CAC and all of those other things, but they've done a lot of public outreach. So you have some things that you can use as a guiding principle as well, that they wanted to stay rural. They want to control where housing goes, things along those lines. Is that beneficial that some of that work has already been done for you? Yes, definitely. Shenandoah County and its communities have a really collaborative relationship. That's not the case everywhere across Virginia. So that really does help. And it gives us something to also look at and work with the town itself and say, here's what they're saying just outside the borders. They want to see growth or development or new restaurants, new opportunities, those sorts of things come to their town cores. So that helps us in making the recommendations and helping people understand the lay of the land. When you're talking about the county, it makes sense that somebody in Strasburg may want to see something come to Woodstock or somebody in Mount Jackson may want to see a particular business come to Newmarket based on their proximity. But when you're dealing with the town of Woodstock, you're sort of only looking at the town of Woodstock, but somebody in Strasburg may come to Woodstock to buy groceries. So they may have input on what type of grocery store or things along those lines. It's not that much different. Yeah, as the seat of the county... Woodstock occupies a very important place in the regional context. So it is definitely important to consider things regionally like that. And we also are seeing similarities between the county public input and what we're hearing, which is interesting because it's not just the pulse of a variety of demographics like population from teens to seniors within our town. We're also seeing that reflected in the county input as well. So I think it's just the voice of people is really being heard very clearly. What happens next? You're in the process now of gathering that input or you have already gathered it and now you're putting it together in some sort of document? We've got the draft vision statement and the goals and objectives and we're going to take them before the planning commission. And these are ideas based off looking at the existing conditions data and the public engagement we've pulled together. And so we're going to review them with the planning commission and see if they have any changes they want to see or if they support it. And then we'll draft the future land use map, which is an important part of the comprehensive plan to guide future growth and development. And then we'll take it again before the public for further comment before sewing it all together to make one complete draft uh, comprehensive plan. Michael, Summit Design and Engineering Services, you were sort of serving as the CAC that Tyler and I talk about. You're taking all of the pieces of information and compiling what these final documents would look like. Is that right? That's correct. As I'm one staff right now as the Director of Planning and Zoning, and with all the land use applications that we have, I just don't have the time to be writing everything and also staying up to speed. And Summit has the ability to be not just a third party review, looking from the outside to help see patterns and connect it. They're also up to speed with best practices and state updates that one staff can't keep up with everything. So we rely on their expertise and skill set and work collaboratively with them as we go forward. So by the time this is being aired, we will have had our big work session with the planning commission where everyone's gonna dive deep, roll up their sleeves and review all of the goals and visions and objectives to get there over the horizon of the life of the comp plan. And that's used to help steer future land growth in and around the town. So it's really exciting. Jill, when Tyler and I talk about their comprehensive planning, we talk about Shenandoah 2045, which is the vision to where they're looking to get for the next plan. What year are you planning towards? 
say we're on a 20 year horizon as well, probably with more emphasis, just starting to look in the next five years to have more concrete incremental steps to go in that direction. But we're developing benchmarks and suggestions on how to have the transportation in place that we want to see or is being recommended and envisioned in the comp plan to have the steps for the housing and for the recreation. All those areas are so important. Michael, I would imagine that having you as a consultant for this planning process is a really valuable asset because you do bring to the table all of the outside information that somebody in a town the size of Woodstock, Jill in particular, may not have access to and may not know this has to be done or you have to look at this or, oh, you can't do that because... Or even to say there's another town in Virginia that's similar in size with similar issues. This is what they did. You've got all kinds of information you can bring to the table. I'd say the community generally is always its best expert at what its needs are. But it is really helpful to have an outside consultant bring these best practices and new ideas from outside and to look at things more objectively. In communities, we see a lot of often friction over a land use case or that sort of thing. And people have very differing ideas about how the community should grow and develop, even though they're saying that they want the same things. So sometimes it's very useful to have the outside consultant who's looking across the state, looking nationally or internationally at trends about what are communities doing to mitigate traffic impacts or what are they doing to fix affordability for housing? What are they doing to protect the environment? These are all some of the things we try to bring into the plan. So that when we do have these divisions and debates and everything, we can actually get through them and move forward to a, a better future. And Jill, this would have to be a 40 or 50 year plan if just one person was behind the <laughs> scenes trying to manage all the moving parts. Oh, exactly. No. And Michael and his whole team have been so helpful. And even though he said that a community knows their own strengths and weaknesses the best. In the last meeting, for example, when we were with the Planning Commission and we were reviewing trends that our appointed body of the Planning Commission was hearing for the first time the results of a lot of the public surveys. And I don't think there was anything that was surprising to them. It took one person from the outside to really shine the light and look at all of it. So you could see commonalities and where there were threads of connectivity between one thought group and another. So I think while the community is known by itself, it really takes an outside person to hold up a mirror and really point out what you're seeing. And I feel like Summit has done a great job doing that. And we look forward to working with them as we cross the finish line on this. It's very similar to having an interior designer come into your house. You've bought the furniture that you like, you know what color scheme that you want, and you have your furniture arranged in a certain way, but now you're bored with it and you're tired with it, but it's the only vision that you can see. The sofa has to go here. I don't know where else to put it. And then you have somebody come in and say, actually, if you move this here and you put this here and you put this there, look how much easier you can move around the room and look how much more light is let in when you lighten the paint. It's the same thing, but you can't see it when you're living in that little box. It is. You're absolutely right, Janet. And at one time, Michael and others from Summit, when we were talking about parking, I heard Summit say, perhaps it's a perceived problem, because if you were really to look at the empty lots, say in churches nearby that are unused and so on, and then changing that perspective. So just like being that interior designer from the outside, that perception is really helpful. I've just given yeah. you a whole new career path, Michael. <laughs> it's like your, yeah, your interior design is not so good. So your friends don't want to come over or something. If right. Yeah. They all don't to... want to be sitting on top of each other. <laughs> Nobody can see the TV from any good yeah. spot on the sofa. And... Not enough chairs. <laughs> Let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk a little bit more about your planning process for the town of Woodstock. It is Shenandoah 2045 today. Tyler and I have taken a little bit of a detour. He is still on the Zooms with me, Tyler Hinkle, Shenandoah County Planner. Joining him today is Jill Jefferson. She is planning director for the town of Woodstock. Also joining us is Michael Stapor. He is with Summit Design and Engineering Services. They are consulting on Woodstock's comprehensive plan. We're going to come back and talk more with all of them in just a couple of minutes. 
Hey guys, I'm Holly. And I'm Bonnie. And we would love to meet you at our brewery, Winchester Brewworks. That's right. Our family-friendly tasting room in Old Town is the perfect place to hang out any day because we're open seven days a week. We've got refreshing beers, seltzers, and slushies, plus food trucks and events on the weekends. And the best part is we are so excited to be part of this brand new passport program where you just need four stamps from Winchester area breweries and cideries to get some great free swag. So pop on by our brewery and we'll get you a passport. You can find out more at winchesterbrewtrail.com. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Shenandoah 2045 day, sort of. Tyler Hinkle, Shenandoah County's planner, is on the Zoom screen with me. Typically, we meet up every month and we talk about the progress of Shenandoah County's comprehensive planning process. We're coming up on a public hearing August 1st. Tyler's going to give us some details about that before we wrap up. But the other thing that we've talked about throughout this whole process is the fact that the town of Woodstock and the town of Strasburg and Newmarket and Mount Jackson and all of the localities throughout the county also have to have their own comprehensive planning process. So Jill Jefferson is joining us today. She is Director of Planning for the Town of Woodstock. Michael Stapor is with us. He is consulting with the town to put together their comprehensive plan. He is with Summit Design and Engineering Services. We talked a good bit during the break, Jill and Michael, about all of the things that you've learned. But before we get into what some of that was, let's go back for a second and talk about your process because it was somewhat similar to what the county did in that you went to pop up things, you showed up at events, you asked people who live in Woodstock, hey, what's important to you? What do you want to see changed? And what do you want to stay the same? We did. We took a page from the county's effort with reaching out to the public and the public was really easy to engage with, I think, because the county had already got everybody from the public in the process of sharing their thoughts. We had a survey that was issued. We had bookmarks that linked to the survey that people could have. We submitted those to the county library, the town library. All the businesses had those downtown by their cash register so the public could see it. I received calls on a regular basis and emails from the public, just in general, thoughts they want to share that we're including. In addition to pop-up events, Michael, you want to talk about the focus group in the school and the interviews that we had? Yeah, so we had a focus group comprised of about 14 different local participants from a wide variety of different interests local business owners, local advocacy groups, local residents in general that were there. And then we also talked to students. Jill actually led the sessions in the schools, talking them through what their vision is for the future of Woodstock. We also interviewed various other people, including Shenandoah County's administrator. We interviewed the public schools and just a lot of other groups, the Economic Development Authority of the town, just to really get a comprehensive view of what everybody is thinking out there. We were also at the Christmas parade, and that was the first event actually we did right when it kicked off in December. That's when we first were handing out the bookmarks, and so hopefully those are still out there circulating. And as Jill said, those linked to the Woodstock VA Comp Plan website where people could take the public survey. Tyler, did you ever guess when you started this whole process of this public engagement and going to events that you were going to ultimately make it easier for the towns to show up and people will be like, oh yeah, I already talked to the county. So let me tell you what I think for my particular town. You've really paved the way for a lot of things to happen. Oh, we hope so. Mount Jackson and Newmarket are planning to start their comp plan efforts sometime soon. So hopefully we lay the groundwork for them as well. Michael, there was also a lot of research that gets done into the nitty gritty that I don't think sometimes residents of a town think about necessarily, like who's commuting, how far, how old is the average person that lives in my town, things along those lines. You have to get in the weeds and figure that sort of thing out too, to know who's there, who's going to be there and what you need to do to accommodate them. That's right. Everybody typically has a very subjective experience of their own community. We interact with our friends or our neighbors, and so we have a general picture in our minds of what our community actually looks like. But when we look at data, we can see that the community in Woodstock, for instance, is growing and is projected to grow by about a couple thousand people until 2050. And you can look back at its history and see that it's also always been growing. For instance, we saw that almost 2,000 people are commuting into Woodstock rather than out of it. 
which differs from how people might think of the community as a bedroom community with everybody going off to work somewhere else. So once you begin to take the public input and match it alongside the data, you get a clearer picture of how the town systems are functioning and what you can actually do to, to affect them. Jill, this planning process isn't all roses. You've also <laughs> got to know where things are broken and what challenges you are facing or could face in the next five to 10 to 15 years. You learn that as well through this process from rental availabilities to poverty levels to flooding concerns, all sorts of things you uncover during this process. Absolutely. And connectivity of mobility systems, because we've been seeing the public is so interested in connecting to make sure they can get from neighborhood to neighborhood or walking to downtown or being able to take public transit, as well as visiting the amenities around in the county, such as the Seven Bend State Park and having that opportunity to connect these different assets or critical facilities for people. You're right. Some of these things that we're finding are challenging and the best way to do it is to take a look with our eyes open and see these trends. And a lot of the trends, especially in housing, reflect on a national level what we are seeing. And what we can do is work not just within our own jurisdiction, but regionally with the county as well as multi-counties to come up with different best practices to help resolve some of these issues because some of them are larger, like watersheds that extend outside of the town, and yet we are a low-lying area. So we do receive the floodwaters from the surrounding overland sheet flow from higher ground, often out of the county into the town as well. Michael, you were telling me during the break that there was a particular time period when you were looking at some of this data where there were zero rentals available and zero houses for sale, which to me is mind boggling because I think all of us that live in a community think there's always something. We may not know what it is or where it is, but we just assume there's always something. And I don't think people realize, no, there isn't always something. That's right. The latest American Community Survey, when we were looking back at the data for our study, it showed that there was nothing for sale and nothing for rent. And of course, there's a margin of error. So there could have been some units out there. But when we looked back 10 years ago, there were at least 100 units available for rent. So when you look at the fact that now rent has also doubled over the last decade, it bears out what people are saying in the community engagement, which is, I can't find a place to rent, first of all, and I can't afford the places that there are to rent, which is a very big problem for the future of the community if people are going to find places to live. Tyler, this mirrored what you found countywide. We had multiple show conversations about housing throughout the county. It also is centered in some of these towns. For sure. Yeah, I think across the board, we've seen that it's been easier for people to build out in the county than it is in our towns where we want to promote that growth. And so it's great to hear the town looking at new ways to, to address housing. And we're hearing that across the board with other towns. How do we make it easier for people to call that those places home? Joe, Tyler and I had a conversation a couple of months ago where we were talking in particular about the transportation chapter and that it wasn't a matter of CAC putting it together and planning commission saying, okay, board of supervisors saying, okay, but VDOT also had to say, okay, there are a lot of other agencies outside of the town of Woodstock and there are a lot of other plans Park plans and transportation plans, all of these things need to come together to fit under your plan that then also has to fit under the Shenandoah County plan. How do you keep all of those puzzle pieces straight? Well, the state code has some requirements when agencies are reviewing things. So they lay out that groundwork that requires a review from these other agencies. Then we have regional transportation meetings where the town talks with the county as well as the regional planning district commission that works with a five county area. And we look at all of the transportation issues, but specifically being our next neighbor, so to speak, being surrounded by the county, we're always keeping an eye and looking and talking with them about their transportation plans and the town's transportation plans. And luckily we've been able to line those up and have them be reflected. Tyler, you mentioned that our Woodstock Bike Ped Master Plan that was adopted in 2019 is now in the county comp plan. 
That's right. And there's uh, that connection to the state park that goes from the town into the county is listed on our plan. We have estimates from VDOT for what that trail would cost to build. And we're set up to mirror the work being done in our towns and make sure everything speaks together and works together. Another, I think, good example of that was there was a study in 2011 that called for changing our downtowns to four-lane highways. And from our public input, and I'm sure from your all's, we're talking about making downtowns more accessible for pedestrians and bikes and not making it easier for people to flow traffic through it. So I think that's another way we're trying to be in line with building these spaces that people want to spend time in and enjoy, not to just drive through them. Yeah, please don't. Please, please, please don't. I like being able to park and walk to all of the places in Woodstock. Please don't do that. And luckily, a more walkable town is our vision as well. So we work well with the county's vision and allows more seamless connections. And Tyler, that's got to give you a little more confidence in the planning process that the county is doing when you have the town of Woodstock doing their own outreach, doing their own research, and a lot of their results are mirroring what you found countywide. And then when Mount Jackson does theirs and New Market does theirs, Strasburg, it's going to be great to be able to see, okay, so we're not crazy weird off base. Everybody is saying the same thing. It just goes to show we're on the right track. No, it's really reassuring to hear that. It's not like we're here in the town, say we're ready to annex an area three times the size of the town and build the next biggest shopping mall of America. It's it's great to hear that they are focusing on growth that's in character with the historic growth we've seen, more walkable, more accessible for everyone of all income and all backgrounds. Because it's a big effort with our county plan, you know, our housing chapter, the vision is that everyone will have access to housing. And that's, I think, an effort that every town, every place in the county is trying to promote. Jill, I completely understand that neither you nor Michael have control over this, but I feel I would be remiss if I did not request that you find room in a comp plan to bring Wegmans to Woodstock, (laughs) because I find a way to work Wegmans into every single conversation that I have with Tyler, even though I know it's a Wegmans choice, not a Shenandoah County choice. (laughs) I too love Wegmans. (laughs) Across the whole state, you'll hear people ask for grocery stores. It's a very interesting conversation because... Grocery stores and rooftops typically are what have to go together. And so every community that wants a grocery store doesn't necessarily want more rooftops. It is a conundrum. (laughs) Yes. Another planning challenge. Yeah. I don't want all the people that have to live here in order for Wegmans to come, but I still want a Wegmans. (laughs) Heard that many times. Jill, you and Michael both mentioned a survey. Is that survey still live? The survey itself is not live, but there are opportunities to read the summary of the surveys on WoodstockVACompPlan.com. Our WoodstockVA.gov website will also link you there. I'm happy to take emails and my contact information is on the website. We are always open to suggestions during this process. It's an open door policy. So while officially the public input for the surveys has ended, public input is always welcome. And there will be some more opportunities. We're going to be having a charrette later this summer, presenting a lot of the information. And then prior to the time of bringing the comp plan before the elected body of the town council, there'll be an official public hearing so that people can be talking about it, just like there's a public hearing for the county's comp plan coming up August 1st. Tyler, like Jill mentions, that means public has input. They can give input at this public hearing right up until the end. So don't think that because you have this draft and it's been narrowed down to all these pages, oh, they don't want to know what I think anymore. That is never the case right up until the Board of Supervisors approves it or in Jill's case, Town Council approves it. And then even after, because as soon as it's approved, you're already working on the next five-year plan to make changes and improve it. So public input is critical throughout the entire process. Absolutely. I think I mentioned this on our last episode. I think this entire plan was built on public input, public co-production of the vision and how we're going to operate the county. And that's going to continue into the future. It's what got us to where we are, and it's going to continue us in the next 20 years. And so ideas are always welcome, be it now or in the next five-year update or the next 20-year update. And we always want to hear from the public because that's the only way we can best serve you is if we know what you need. Jill, tell me one more time, where can people go online to figure out where you are in the process and offer any input they may have? WoodstockVACompPlan.com. 
is the website that has draft sections of the comp plan right now with the results from the public input, as well as existing conditions that talked about some of the trends that Michael mentioned. You can also access staff or any of the other planning projects that we have on our town website, which is woodstockva.gov. We are in the process right now of planning our master park plan, and that's available on the website. So there's a lot of exciting things that are happening, and we're grateful to have all this happen at the same time. So the different plans are talking to one another, and there's continuity. Jill, thank you for taking some time to explain all this to me today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Tyler. Michael, thanks for hanging out with us and filling my head full of all of this data that I didn't know I needed to know. And now I'm going to start telling everybody about it. Thank you very much for having me. And Tyler, this Thursday, again, as people are listening on the radio today, this Thursday, public hearing in Woodstock. What time and where? 7 p.m. at 600 North Main Street in the boardroom. You can also find the plan online both on our Facebook page, which you can find at Shindo2045, and on the website, which is shindocountyva.us forward slash future. We welcome everyone to come out and provide your opinion, especially if you've been listening to the radio show all these years. We'd love that. Even if you're not a Shenandoah County resident, come and see what the process has been like that you've been listening to. Come see it unfold before you in real life. (laughs) That's right. And then when Woodstock announces their date, go to theirs because we're all a team and we need to be able to support each other. Thank you. I appreciate you pulling this group together for me today. Thank you all. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley. Today it is Tourism Tuesday, so meet me back here for that just a few minutes after noon.